The new FX F35B Lightning. How easy is it to put together? Let's find out right here on Gary Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Now today, indeed, I'm building the F35B Lightning 172nd scale, the new starter set from Airfix. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of these and you want to know what's in the box, there's a companion video already online to show you what's inside. Now, if you've already got one or one's on the way, you want to know how to build it, this is very much the place for you. Now, if you enjoy the show, please do remember Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future videos. And of course, if you want to make a bit more con contribution to the site, you can by going through Super Thanks, by becoming a channel member or by joining any of my online partner programs, one of which is the Airfix Affiliate Program. So if you click on the link in the information box below, go and buy one of these or indeed anything from Airfix or Humbrol, then at no extra cost to you, Airfix will make a small donation to this channel. And of course, if you're an Airfix club member, you still get your 10% discount. And if you collect hobby points, you'll still get those as well. So let's crack on and have a look at how I made this F35B Lightning starter set from Airfix. We're going to make a start by cleaning up some of the parts here. We're going to use our nippers here just to take off these little nibs of plastic. They're actually part of the uh, mechanism for removing stuff from the sprue. What we're going to do is just gently squeeze the nippers. Don't snap at them. Don't, you know, do them really quickly. We're going to just gently squeeze and that way it will just sort of slice through the plastic rather than tear it. Then the bit that's left, we can sand down. Now I make my own sanding sticks, of all sorts of different grades or harshnesses. I'm using lolly sticks and sandpaper. Or you can buy some sanding pads that, again, come in different grades, depending on what you want to do. Just work your way around the aircraft taking off all these little nibs from the plastic. Next thing we're going to do is to remember to dry fit everything. So we fit things together without using any glue first, just to make sure that they fit together. If they don't fit, then maybe we need to do a little bit of sanding somewhere to remove a little bit of excess plastic. But dry fit everything first to ensure that everything's going to sit together properly. Now, in these starter sets, the tube of glue is way too big for what you need, and it's really not helpful. So I use um, a little bit of wood, cocktail stick or something like that, to apply glue in smaller patches to the part that I need joined. Now, sometimes, like here, there are parts where the, the frame joins the piece, or there's been an, uh, one of those ejector pin nibs that's going to be in a really awkward position. It's like right on a curve or sort of too near a, another piece. Just be really careful how you do these. Um, use a, the very, very edge of your sanding stick or your pad and just very gently take those bits off. There are now three parts that fit into the fuselage to give it some strength. The first of these is at the front of the aircraft, just behind the inlets for the jets, and that just swats in like so. Next, there's one in the middle of the aircraft that just swats into place. There's a couple of locating tabs and slots, and you'll notice these two little bits here, they need to point towards the front of the aircraft, which is, of course, that way. 
and at the back is a piece which is the turbines actually the rear turbine of the engine and that piece just slots in like so glue those in they'll then provide the structure when we fit the top of the aircraft again here sometimes you see these little round things these are where the pins are in the molds to push the aircraft just to release it slightly from the mold before it comes out these are called ejector pin marks now these are sort of recessed but sometimes they just sit up a little bit the edges can sit up a little bit and that will stop the joint sitting absolutely perfectly so get get a bit of a sanding stick or a sanding pad and just make sure you knock off the edges of those holes and then the two halves of the fuselage fit together very straightforwardly again we could, we've dry fit these just to make sure there's no parts that sit up or don't go together properly but everything looks like it's going to sit absolutely fine so then we'll start applying a bit of glue along the contact surfaces remember don't use too much just work your way around with a little stick like this and put not too much glue at any point when everything's in place you can clamp or tape the model together so that all the contact surfaces remain in contact you can use masking tape you can use uh, little pegs like these you can use clothes pegs if you're going to use tape do make sure it's something quite gentle maybe masking tape designed for delicate surfaces not anything like sellotape because that will leave a residue on your kit next are the fins or vertical stabilizers these slot into these pieces here um, just check you're getting them on the right side because they do se sit out quite a lot if you put the, it in the wrong one it kind of doesn't feel right it doesn't fit very well so make sure they're in the right ones they sit quite so it can sit quite sharply outwards um, when you're happy with the fit a little bit of glue on that inside face and glue them up now a lot of the smaller parts like this ejection seat i tend to paint rather still on the frame here but what I find easier is to just take off the bits that you're going to like me to see quite easily like that where that feeder comes into the top of the ejection seat make sure this is all cleaned up here then when you paint it because this tiny little bit down here you're not going to see that when the plane when this goes into the plane you're not going to see that joint so I have to worry about tidying that up but then you can paint this nicely and that will look fantastic and that can then go into the aircraft all right so we're going to start painting the the cockpit first of all we're going to the paints when they come may well have separated they will have been manufactured then they'll be on the shelves waiting dispatch then they'll be put into starter kit boxes like this then those starter kit boxes will be hanging around on a container ship being delivered and then they'll possibly wait around in a warehouse or on a shelf or whatever so these paints will separate i'm told told these are the latest humbrol generation 2 paints so when they are mixed they should be okay to use they will also be quite thick um, that's just the way these are made uh, i suspect it's because they're going on to they could be going down onto bare plastic they should really prime these things as well so you can mix this down a little bit if it's too thick but just give it a good stir with a cocktail stick or anything small like that and then just start painting the interior Now because you primed this this is going to stick to the paint straight away if you haven't primed it you'll find that the paint takes a little time to bind to the um, bare surface of the plastic so you have to go over it a few times if you've primed it you shouldn't really need to do it more than once or at the most twice depending on how well you paint it obviously now i will always add just a touch of water to the brush as well so just dilute down the paint if i've put a primer on because 
otherwise this paint can be quite thick and a bit unsightly. But just work your way around the cockpit with this pale grey. Now I've painted the cockpit in the 165 light grey. What I've also done, just using the colours that they provide, black and white they provide, I've just picked out some of these sort of panel shapes. They're on the, the moulding, the panel shapes are on the moulding. And then I've just dotted tiny, tiny bits of white around using the very small brush, the number zero brush. Just, it's to give the impression of more instruments and controls than are actually there. Now, remember, we're going to have the canopy closed, so it doesn't have to be that accurate. It just has to be little spots of light on a black panel, and it will look convincing. Trust me. All we need to do next is put the decal, the transfer, we used to call them, onto here. And we soak it for a little while in water. We put some water on here as well. If you can, get yourself some decal setting solution. It'll be called decal set or something like micro set. It's, it's really a useful product because it, it helps this part of the process so, so much. Okay, so we're gonna get the decal itself now, still on its backing sheet. Um, let's see if it's, yep, it's ready to move. Okay, so, there it is on its backing sheet. And what we're going to do is going to use the brush to sort of tempt it into place. Realistically, this piece should be bigger. And it wouldn't look quite so rubbish. But there we go. That's uh, the design for you. We'll just leave it like that for the moment. Do you know what? I've double checked and triple checked and checked yet again. And I can't see that I would have thought with this shape there, and as this bit is wider than the pillar there, sorry, can't see it, the pillar there, there should be another piece here maybe. Maybe to sit out a bit from the background. Maybe they missed out a bit. I don't know, that's really odd, but that, that decal is like almost twice the width of the post it goes on. That's the way it is. You know, there isn't another piece that I've looked. I've looked everywhere on every frame and there isn't a piece that goes there. Anyway, when you're ready, the ejection seat can sit inside the cockpit tub like so. The um, cockpit's all done now, so we can put the cockpit canopy and this just slots into place. Now, Ethics say don't glue it and you don't have to glue it. That's a good thing. It should stay in quite well as it is. I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny dab of very thin glue to this just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so what I've done now is um, you can see this yellow stuff. That's masking tape. You can buy this masking tape in strips or you can get regular masking tape and just cut it into very thin strips. I've lined the canopy that I want to keep clear with that. Then this purpley stuff is called masking fluid. It comes in a jar. Um, it's a bit like latex, and I have like, like um, hobby glues, copy decks, hobby glues, that latex based stuff. A bit like that, water soluble. Um, but once it dries, it's, it's absolutely waterproof. So I just fill in the rest of it with that. You can, of course, just tape the whole thing up, just use more and more bits of tape. It's up to you. I just find this leaves less residue on the plastic. Now, the reason I'm doing this, normally I'd be um, hand brushing this because that's what you get in the kit. I'm going to be spraying this for, well, one main reason is because I will be spraying some varnish on later on as well. So I need this mask off for the varnish anyway. Um, I want to make sure this is primed so that the paint actually um, sticks to it. I just find it gives a much nicer result. I've got an airbrush. You can buy a tin of the relevant paint from uh, model shops as well. Um, that will make it easier to do. Or you can brush paint it. It's entirely up to you. Uh, brush painting, you use your number four brush, the bigger brush, and just take your time. But 
the best thing to do is to prime it first. So for that reason, I've covered up the cockpit. One thing when you're doing the nozzle, there were these these stub bits here are where there's been four of those um, nibs, ejector nibs. So I have to have to try and get these off now. You your nippers aren't going to do that because they can't get into the that uh, the curve, if you like. So what you're going to need to do for this is get a bit of um, sandpaper, rolled up sandpaper, and just sort of run it backwards and forwards inside there to pick it out. So yeah, what well, we've got a bit of rolled up sandpaper, and that you can use that to get rid of these nibs on the inside. The frame. While the paint is drying and then the varnish I've put on is drying, I'm just going to put together the um, exhaust. Now this is uh, the, cat, the pointing down exhaust because I'm having the aircraft um, in hover mode. Of course, there's a set for a straight pipe for the aircraft in normal forward flight mode. So just glue those bits together. Then when those are glued together, you can add the nozzle goes on as well, like so. When the paint and then the gloss coat of varnish on top has dried, we can start placing the decals. These are going to just sort of slide on and sit down. There's very few of them by normal standards. Um, yeah, a bit further back than that, maybe. Very, very few of them, but you know they they go on fairly easily. Um, these are nice cartograph decals, so they slide quite well. Right, so the decals have dried on nicely now. I've also painted all these interior parts white. I've painted the fan here with the gunmetal colour. Then at the tailplane, I can fit the exhaust on as well. Put the wheel onto the undercarriage leg, the main undercarriage leg, and then put the legs into the aircraft. Now they fit um, with the actuator leg at the front. So the little scissor joint here, knee joint, um, pointing backwards. And you can see there's a, so point it in, there's a little block on the side here of the main leg, and that goes towards the middle of the plane. That way, you know, you've got it in exactly the right place. And the nose wheel fits with the actuator on the link armor at the front. They're going to the middle of the well. And then the main leg part of it sitting at the back of the well, like so. And then what you need to do is fit all of the doors, the fan door. The gear doors here, the gear doors there, and the engine doors here. And on the back of the aircraft here, we have a couple of doors for the auxiliary air intake here. And I've got the um, augmenter fan, lift fan cover here. And I've noticed on several images that there's a Union flag on the inside of them on many British aircraft, so I'm putting it on as well. I just happen to have one lying around in my spares tray. And the last piece is the cover for the lift fan that sits here, like so. So we give it one last coat of matte varnish. We take the canopy masks off, unpeel the canopy masks, and we can put it onto the rather lovely shadow stand, which I've here painted black, and our kit is complete.
there it is then, the F35B. Um, it's a lovely starter set. It's not the best model of an F35, but it's a lovely starter set. I think if you're new to the hobby, it's absolutely brilliant. If you're not, you're going to miss some of the detail. Um, the, uh, the weapons bay doors that form air dams, the detail on the back of the engine exhaust, the little puff vents under the side of the wings, some of the decals that really would have cost nothing to put on. Um, but do you know what? It's a decent little kit. In, and if you're a starter, it's a brilliant little kit to get cracking on with, let's face it, the most modern aircraft in the current British infantry. Um, so would I recommend it? Totally. Absolutely. Yes. If you've enjoyed the show, and I hope you have, please do remember Imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they turn up. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again very soon. Goodbye.